New game from Ubisoft about a scoundrel? What? What? Uh, uh, I was just leaving. Wow. Wow! Welcome back to the Foul Scoundrel, everybody. We're going to get into Ubisoft's new Star Wars game real quick. Uh, before we do so, if you're new to my channel, uh, hit the like and subscribe button. Hit that notification icon. That way you are notified when more content drops just like this. And you can always stop by my online store if you want to support this channel and you want to keep us going. Uh, it's a spread shop. Ubisoft says we're going to make an open world game because there are no Star Wars open world games. Okay, you know what? There are no Ubisoft open world Star Wars games. We'll start with that. I am super excited that they are making a Star Wars game about the scoundrels, right? I mean, come on. You got to love we got to love the scoundrels here. They're they're part of the heart of the story, right? The Empire would totally have won without us. Anyway, um, I, I was really happy to see a lot of things and really not happy to see a lot of things. And this is what I mean. Uh, number one, Ubisoft making a Star Wars game is awesome. <laughs> awesome. Number two, Ubisoft making a Star Wars game is freaking horrible. Uh, this is what I mean by that. As, if anybody has ever played a Ubisoft game ever, they are like second to EA when it comes to producing an unfinished product and then you paying for the them to keep making it. Yeah, uh, I played The Division, The Division 2, Assassin's Creed. Okay, yeah, Assassin's Creed was great. It kind of got less through the years. The bigger the game got, the less it was for me as a player. I didn't really care for it the bigger the game. I, th I like the central stories and the real the real characters that they had in there. I'm kind of hoping they kind of bring that close-knit character arcs into this new Star Wars game and uh, leave the vast world and universe to discover and uh, not to create too many story arcs, right? You, you get lost in a lot of Ubisoft games. Uh, the Division, not so much story arc as it is, boy, did they need to improve that game so much before it was, it was even playable. I remember when the first Division came out, oh my gosh, I had to wait 24 hours before I was allowed to play it. And when I did play it, it was so off-balance for like a year, it, it was hard to get through. So, uh, the end product, when they were done with all their updates, is an amazing game. It just took so long to get there, I was kind of moving on to other games. So, I'm hoping this game is not the same. What I've noticed, okay, we're going we're gonna to talk about a couple of game mechanics. Um, what I've noticed... <clears throat> you know, looking at the gameplay footage and and uh, listen to uh, rep reps from Ubis or Ubisoft talk, it looks like it's the game we played a hundred times, right? This is the division set in a galaxy far, far away, uh, where you're using stealth and cover mechanics, uh, distract mechanics. It's all the same. If you play the division, you're going to be very familiar with this game. Um, one thing I I'm, I'm going to say one thing I don't like, straight out of the gate is they're they're making too familiar of a character in a non-familiar story in a very familiar setting. What I mean by that is we have a new protagonist named K. All right. I don't want another Ray. I don't want another Ray. I don't even want another Jin or Urso who Jin Urso was an awesome character, but I don't want another one. We already have Jenner's. We already have Princess Leia. We had Rey. We've had Rey three times. We don't want Rey. Enough. Um, though I don't know how well that would stand in the video game environment. Rey was, was good for what they needed her for. I just hope they don't use this character in the same light as Rey. We need to have a, a more human story in an alien environment, if that makes any sense. So... Even though it's set in a galaxy far, far away in a universe of laser swords and magic, we still need to have something a little grounded, something familiar to hold on to. So hopefully K 
uh, is a character that we can familiarize ourselves with. Being a scoundrel, I don't think that'd be too hard, right? I mean, come on. But uh, I'm hoping they kind of follow the same formula as all of their other Ubisoft games where you can choose who you want to be. You know, you want to make a, a male or female character, you know, kind of customize. Now, I haven't seen anything or heard anything like that, so that's just me wishing upon a star in, in a galaxy far, far away. So hopefully that becomes a thing because I would hate to have another scenario where I'm stuck with going, oh, this is great, but who is this game for? Anyway, um, all things being considered, I really like what they did with the game mechanics are so familiar. Though, though it's just still, still the, the distract an enemy, attack, you know, use varied attacks for different armed enemies. Yeah, it's kind of the same formula we've seen in the Jedi Survivor games and uh, um, the uh, Ubisoft's uh, The Division. Oh my gosh, <laughs> talking about The Division, I can't even say it. Um, the division games where it's you know you, you kind of have to up you know you're upgrading your guns on the fly uh and uh, adapting the situations which is fine but it kind of lends to one style of gameplay so i don't know if that'll get old for some folks really quick i know uh player fatigue from the division and even uh jedi fallen order where everybody loved the game they're like okay this is kind of the same mechanic replayed over and over i'm like that no one wants to play Mario for 10 hours straight anymore. You know, we've kind of evolved past that point where it's more than just jump here, jump there. Um, not a platformer, a classic platformer that, that people are looking for. But what I did like is it, it the game design itself. The enemies aren't just stormtroopers, not just droids. They're pulling species from all corners of the Outer Rim. Okay, they, they are pulling game mechanics from not just the division but there's a lot of familiar things you see even from jedi survivor where you're jumping on crates you're uh trying to hide from the enemy and when they do show up you have to pick your tactics uh and, and fight them accordingly you're going to get overwhelmed really quickly another thing i like is that you're introducing mounts uh swoop bikes or speeder bikes however you want to say it um in their open world right so you get to go to all these different places i'm sure there will be pop-up missions, side quests you don't, that you don't even know about until you get there or explore and find them. I'm sure it's going to be that way. I mean, if it's like the Division where you do find other things out and about when you go to different safe houses uh, and find different missions you didn't know you were going to run into, I, I think that's, that's going to be something a lot like this. Um, another thing they showed is space, right? It's not just one world or one city. You go into space and have battles you go to other planets and have battles you have your own ship you have companions um that is all fantastic but that is also part of the, the the cons right where we talked about the same character arc the, the the lonely hero with the cute pet is so overdone i'm just glad they didn't do an order 66 survivor all by themselves with a cute pet i would not even be talking about this game if it was even going that direction uh, but it is set between uh, Empire Strikes Back and The Return of the Jedi. Just so we're really clear, that is my favorite era of Star Wars. Duh, I'm in my 40s. That is going to be my my favorite era. Um, however, you know they're saying there's only a year between uh, the two stories, and actually there was a longer span there. Uh, but they're they're taking it as there is a year between. The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, and we have this new scoundrel, this new uh, undercutter that is just getting their start in the in the CD underworld of trading. And I'm not exactly sure how that's going to play out uh, with the Rebels and the Empire, but I know you get introduced to the Empire early on. Uh, there's a gameplay, there's some gameplay footage. Uh, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, or if you haven't seen it playing behind me. Um, they, they introduce the Empire early on when you go do a mission and uh, your droid, Indy. <laughs> Indy? Who knew? Indy? Indy? Uh. Uh. Anyway, Indy tells you not to trust anybody. Of course you're not going to, but you don't ever have control of who you run into, even in, even in RL. So um, I do like the fact that the Empire straight away shows their fangs and... Uh, Straight away, you can see where the underworld was feeding into that and trying to trying to make a profit on that. And you're out on your own trying to escape the Empire and make your own way. 
that that is such that's such a cool vibe, man. Such a cool story. I like the setting. I like the fact that it isn't the same story, so to speak. Hopefully not, but relatable, right? Anyway, tell me what you think. Do you guys think this is going to be a the Star Wars game we've been waiting on? Uh, Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor, very good games. Um, I I do think I like to move away from the Jedi at some point. You got like a scoundrel like Ubisoft. I think they got it right with that kind of character. I don't know. I like the fact you get to go to other planets. You have your own ship, uh, companions, upgradable weapons, new places, new sites, familiar faces, and awesome, awesome enemies to fight. And hopefully the story is as awesome as the game looks. All right, well, if you agree to me, let me know. Let me know in the comments below if you think this game is going to rock or flop. Uh, hit Again, hit that uh, notification icon, like, and subscribe if you want to see more content like you just saw. And remember, folks, if it's from a galaxy far, far away, you are never far from a good time.